Elemental reactions are what make Genshin the great game it is. With so many various reactions that you can create, it allows many different playstyles. If your main concern is about combat, you might want to steer clear of Superconduct. And if you've been playing Genshin for a while, then you know that Superconduct has been one of the worst elemental reactions in the game. It performs much worse when compared to the others. In this video, I will be talking about what Superconduct is, explain three reasons why it's an underwhelming reaction, and then talk about some possible solutions to improve the elemental reaction. Now before I start yapping about the elemental reaction, I know I will probably anger Eula mains and maybe the 5 Razor mains that exist out there. That's perfectly fine with me. Now I'm assuming most of you know what Superconduct does, but if you don't, here's what it is. So Superconduct is an elemental reaction that occurs when Cryo meets Electro, or vice versa. When the reaction is triggered, it will deal AoE Cryo damage in a 5 meter radius. This damage only scales off of the character's elemental mastery and their level. The reaction also lowers the physical resistance of any target's hit by 40% for 12 seconds. Essentially, this elemental reaction is supposed to be utility for physical damage. Now the first reason why Superconduct is terrible is because many monsters in the game have very high physical resistance. But you might be thinking, how is it bad if it's reducing their resistances? Well, here's a quick explanation on how resistances work in Genshin. Let's pretend a monster has 40% pyro resistance. Then let's apply 4-piece viridescent debuff with a swirl reaction. This lowers the elemental resistance of the swirl by 40%. So in this case, the monster now has 0% pyro resistance. Now let's take another example. This time the target has 20% pyro resistance. So same thing, let's apply VV debuff. For this instance, the pyro resistance of the target is negative 10%, not negative 20. This is because anything below 0% becomes halved. If you've ever heard anyone say stacking resistance shred is diminishing, this is what they're talking about. Hoyaverse implemented this because any monster with negative resistance takes much more damage than normal. Based on how the calculation works, in this negative 10% example, the target now has a 1.1 resistance multiplier, meaning that the pyro damage is now amplified by 10%. So with all that tryhard stuff out of the way, basically many monsters can't reach negative physical resistance, and some of them even have very high physical resistance even with the superconduct debuff. While resistance shred is diminishing below 0% resistance, any target that is in the range of negative numbers takes much more damage. But because superconduct only decreases physical resistance by 40%, the reaction is not very good. 40% may seem like a lot, as it's the same as the 4-piece viridescent, but keep in mind that a lot of monsters have very high physical resistance, so that 40% is really not that good. Hopefully that makes sense. The next reason why Superconduct is not very good is because it's pretty much worthless outside of physical damage. If you run Cryo with the Electro but don't have a physical damage dealer on your team, there is pretty much no point of the elemental reaction. The base damage is also one of the lowest in the game, sitting at 723 at level 90. For comparison, Electro Charged is 1736 and Overloaded is 2893. And on top of that, Electro Charged has its purpose of being good against multiple targets, while Overloaded provides the blunt attack property, and it also staggers monsters. On the other hand, Superconduct doesn't really do anything special. Now I know Superconduct is supposed to be a utility-based elemental reaction, but the damage might as well not even exist. If they got rid of the damage, you probably wouldn't even notice it. And speaking of Superconduct's damage, another thing to mention is 4-piece Thundering Fury set. This increases Superconduct damage by 40%, which is Hoyaverse's way of saying, Please use Superconduct for the damage. But let's be honest, no one runs Superconduct for the damage. If you want to increase your damage with Electro characters, just use Dendro instead. Spread completely obliterates Superconduct in terms of damage. It's not even close. And finally, the third reason why it's not a good elemental reaction is because when it applies AoE cryo damage, it does not apply cryo to the opponents. This makes it impossible to set up elemental reactions that involve cryo, such as melt. If you want to spread cryo among opponents, you can just use swirl instead. Not only that, but you can also equip the animal character with viridescent, making superconduct pretty much a dead reaction. If it serves very little purpose outside of physical damage teams, then what's the point of running cryo and electro together? Superconduct would be a little bit better if it applied cryo to the target, but unfortunately it doesn't. 
So what are some things Hoyaverse can do to improve superconduct? I would say add something such as Elemental Resistance Shred, maybe around 20% so it can be used outside of physical damage teams. Nothing too crazy here, just a small amount of Elemental Resistance Shred, and it would be helpful. And for the Physical Resistance Shred, I would say increase it from 40% to 60%. 20% might not seem like a lot, but it's a 50% increase from 40 to 60. This would help physical damage teams a lot, as they could really use it. I also think this is a perfectly safe change because physical damage can't be amplified with elemental reactions anyway. I also think it's important to note that while Hoyoverse has no intention of changing a character's numbers after their release, they have no problem adjusting the game's mechanics such as elemental reactions or elemental resonance. For example, the base damage of Superconduct was increased in 1.6, and Double Hydro Resonance was changed in 3.0 to provide 25% HP instead of 30% incoming healing. If they were to adjust any elemental reaction, Superconduct would be on their priority list. This elemental reaction could really use some love. Just like Xiao. So that's pretty much why Superconduct is underwhelming. Hopefully Hoyaverse does something with the elemental reaction to make it more usable in both physical and non-physical teams. Every elemental reaction in Genshin has a use, but Superconduct doesn't seem to fit any role, and for the role it's supposed to fulfill, it's not very good in the first place. We'll have to wait and see if it ever gets an adjustment in the future. Thank you for watching. See you later.